this car is not starting or cranking. Sometimes it turns over and sometimes it doesn't. I replaced the battery and I didn't notice any problems for a while, but then it started having problems again with turning over. So I didn't realize what the actual problem is. And that is the relay needs to be replaced. So I'm going to show how to test and replace the relay. Please mention in the comments if there are any codes you get for this no crank, no start problem that plagues so many vehicles. And I'll put it in the description of this video, which should help others out. This is being done on a Chrysler 300, Dodge Charger, or Magnum. This should help with many cars. With that being said, let's start. Open the hood. If your latch is stuck, jammed, or hard to open, I have a separate video you can watch to fix that. I'll put that in the description below. Anyway, locate the front power distribution center box on the passenger side to the left. This fuse box is by the red positive jumper area. Now carefully pull on the tab and lift up the fuse cover box. There's a bunch of fuses and relays here, but pretty much you're looking for the relay near a couple of fuses labeled number nine on the box lid. You can also look for the location in the owner's manual or do a quick search online to narrow down which relay is the starter relay. Anyway, this is the relay part number. I'll put this in the description below as well as all the tools and supplies that you need to determine if this is good or not. While you're checking that out, please hit the like button and subscribe. Then let's fix this problem. Now first just grab a test light and test all the fuses, but specifically test the starter fuse which is green and 25 amps. Assuming the green fuse is good, and it is, I will take out and test the starter relay next. So just so you know, sometimes the relays are not in tight enough, so you could just pull it up and out and then put it back in or you could tap it that may work but to be safe i'm going to test it and or replace if necessary next i'm using a pair of pliers to lightly wiggle this out but you may be able to pull it out by hand as well now let's go test this relay gather all of these supplies such as a multimeter four alligator clips the relay of course and optionally a test light probe and pliers I'll briefly explain this relay, but if interested, I have a more detailed video to better understand how this works. You can check that out in the description below later. Anyway, there's a diagram here, and then there's numbers on this side. These numbers correspond to this diagram. So this is number 30, this is 87, and this is 85 and 86, and the middle is 87A. All what you want to remember is 85 and 86 connect to each other, so this and this, and then 30 and 87 connect to each other. Grab a battery. In this case, I'm using my power drill battery, and I'm using some alligator clips to connect the leads to this. Make sure one alligator clip is on the negative or ground side, and the other alligator clip is attached to the positive side of your portable battery. Now I'm going to connect one lead to number 85, doesn't matter which one you do it, or the order. And now I'm just going to tap number 86, you should hear a sound, a click sound, and you might feel it uh, shaking or vibrating because I hear a sound clicking. I know it's good, so I can move on to the next step. Go ahead and leave that connected. Go ahead and grab some more alligator clips and connect them to your leads. Set your multimeter to the ohms. This one right here. Now go ahead and connect the other corners, which is 30 and 87. And you want your reading to be as close as possible to zero. This might fluctuate this number because there's resistance, but it's pretty close to zero. So I know this is still very good. If it was a lot higher the number, you may want to consider replacing the relay. In this case, this is good. So now I can go back and reinstall this and get rid of the bad one. I might even test the other relays as well. But let me know if this testing relay procedure helps you out. Back to the car. Now I'll put the starter relay back in. Okay. This is so easy to do. And if you don't want to test the relay, then just buy a new one and pop it in. It's good to keep a few extra relays in your car with some other spare fuses. I'll be changing one of the other relays as I have a code for the wiper motor switch. I'll leave that video in the description as well as all the tools and supplies I used. If this video solved your problem, 
let me know in the comments as well as your thoughts on this video. Also please subscribe and like this video. Now I'm going to start my car and feel good knowing I won't be late this time. Bye!